Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss in our lecture series the topic name is modulation and its types and need for modulation. Come, let's get into the topic. So before getting into the topic, first of all we should uh, know what is modulation in simple way. Uh, see, you just take uh, an example in this image. You can see uh, one, one guy is throwing the uh, papers, right? Uh, by by his hand uh, but uh, the paper no it will not go to the uh, very long distance because it has very 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 less wide so it cannot able to travel for a long distance and the next picture you if you see if the same paper is wrapped by the uh, one stone one um, um, strong stone and it will be thrown uh, for a distance mean it will go for a long distance from this no uh, we can understand what is modulation See here, the original, the paper which contains the information that actually needs to uh, send to the destination point. But the here, the stone which is used to carry the information, that's a paper to the destination point. At the destination point, the stone, uh, obviously we uh, don't want the stone because only the information which is needed. So this is called a modulation. So come, let's uh, correlate this example with our uh, uh, actual uh, uh, modulation process involved in the communication. See here uh, in this image, you can see message signal is there. Message signal you, you compare with the, that, that paper that which contains information. And here below that, that's a carrier signal. The carrier signal here, it is assumed it as a, that stone. So this carrier will carry this message information, message signal uh, to the destination point. So to perform this operation, we have a modulator. That, that modulator will have the modulation process. So this is the simple uh, example and the simple ex explanation about this modulation. So without the modulation, the message signal or the input signal, we cannot able to transmit for a long distance. And if uh, if the modulation process is not involved in this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, application in this process, the message signal may be uh, affected by the external noises. And also, no, uh, we cannot able to have a uh, high range of communication will not be performed. So several uh, disadvantages are there without the modulation. And uh, here though, uh, uh, first the baseband signal, baseband signal here is nothing but of uh, before modulation, the signal will be called as a baseband signal. The baseband signal is nothing but of without the carrier signal is called a baseband signal. For the best example, the sound wave in front of mic, microphone, if you talk before the microphone, the microphone will convert the signal as a uh, electrical signal. That actual electrical signal is called as a baseband signal. If the electrical signal will be given to, uh, will be combined with the uh, carrier signal, that will be called as a, um, a modulation process. But before mo modulation, the actual uh, electrical signal will be called as a baseband signal. And what is the need of modulation? I already told that uh, that is a main thing is to have a long distance communication and uh, to to ensure there won't be a, any external interferences uh, to the um, actual input signal. We need a modulation. Along with these points, there are several uh, need also there that let's see one by one. That's the size of antenna gets reduced. This is one of the point. And there's no scope of signal mixing. The communication range increases. Multiplexing of signals uh, signals occurs. Adjustments in the bandwidth are allowed. At improvement in the reception quality. These are all the uh, several needs for this modulation process. And types of modulation, we have two types. One is analog modulation, another one is a digital modulation. And in analog modulation, we have three types again. Amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, phase modulation. This is obviously we called as AM, FM and PM. And in digital modulation, we have uh, amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying and phase shift keying. That's ASK, FSK and PSK. And amplitude modulation, here uh, the first thing input signal is there and the carrier and uh, the final third waveform which is nothing but of amplitude modulated waveform here according to the amplitude modulation the carrier signal will be varied in accordance with the uh, input signal that's a message signal that is called amplitude modulation and frequency modulation the same concept uh, the carrier frequency will be varied according with the uh, accordance with the uh, input signal uh, uh, amplitude that is frequency modulation and phase modulation the phase of the carrier will be varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal so this is the phase modulation and uh, difference between frequency and phase we know here in this uh, diagram we can be able to understand the phase and the uh, phase which is called as a pi and uh, frequency we know 
um, there is 2 pi by uh, omega naught like that we can uh, uh, mention from this we can understand the difference between phase and the frequency uh, so thank you so this is the um, uh, in the session we have discussed about the modulation and its types and need so in the next uh, session we will discuss the pulse code modulation techniques thank you